Hey everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by the Minecrafters. This is Captain Jack and in this short video we're going to be talking about the Ender IO Crafter. First off the machine does require power and it's going to be 2500 RF per craft um, up to a maximum of 125 RF per tick and it has an internal storage buffer of 100,000 RF. Now we can change that by using these double layer or octatic capacitors and it will also change the speed at which this machine can craft which I'll show you again in a second. Over here we have a 3x3 typical crafting grid, and if you put inside of this a pattern, let's see, we could do sticks, um, and then you place some uh, of the proper material over here, it will automatically craft these sticks and put them in the output spot over here, so we can make some sticks just like that. Now, um, you can put any pattern that you want in here, so I can load this up with chest, there's your pattern, if I shift click this over here, it's going to automatically craft me a couple chests, okay, and the speed depends on how uh, how many or what type of uh, capacitor that you have inside of there. So this is going to create just at a slightly faster speed than with no capacitor. Okay, like that. And let's go ahead and make some wood planks here and we'll make, uh, make this thing really fast, load them up in there and you can see how the crafting speed dramatically increases, okay? So the octatic capacitor is going to make stuff very, very quickly for you. Let's change this over to a chest pattern. Let's remove these out of here and let's load this up and you can see how fast this thing crafts. So it's pretty neat. The buttons on the far right of the GUI are standard Ender IO buttons. Um, we have redstone control here, so we can uh, choose a variety of different control options if you want to throw a redstone signal at this machine. Over here we have a configure IO button, which we'll go over in just one second. And we have this buffering item or single stacks button right here, and I'll show you what that does. So if I throw in um, a wood plank here, and uh, say I want to just, uh, I want to do single, if I shift click this and put it in here. See how it's only putting in one at a time? That's because it will never allow more than one of these in here at a time. That's going to be really important for the setup that we're about to do. Um, if I go ahead and shift click with uh, stacks of items, it's going to always try to keep stacks of items inside of here. And uh, that may be good, that may be bad, depending on what you're trying to uh, use the machine for. Uh, but that is what this button does here. Now, the next button we're going to go over is the configure IO button. All right, so this button comes standard on most Ender IO machines now that have a uh, um, inventories inside of them and uh, what this does is it brings up a really cool interface here that you can kind of drag and look around and see what's going on here so what it does is it shows all the blocks adjacent to it so in the back here um, you can't see it but there is a power line running into the machine we got a block down here a chest over here and an industrial information panel right there now in the chest to the left we have a bunch of different um, wood planks so what this machine is actually capable of doing is it's capable of dragging those wood planks inside the inventory of the crafter. So let's say we have this chest set up here once again, okay, but we have no wood planks inside of here, but we do have wood planks in an adjacent inventory. So let's open up the configure IO button. Let's go ahead and do pull, and there we go. It's yanking a whole bunch of different, uh, or basically it's yanking in all the contents of this chest here into the crafter. And uh, since we have this buffering stacks of items, it's going to um, just load it up with a whole bunch of different um, uh, wood planks. Now, if I was to go ahead and use this buffer, buffer single items, I'll show you the difference in how this, uh, this machine interacts with the chest next to it. So I'm going to drag over here. I'm going to set to pull. And you see how it's only launching in eight at a time, and it's never keeping more um, than those eight inside of the machine at any one time? That's the difference between the stacks, and that's the difference between single items. So that's um, one of the capabilities of this machine, which is pretty awesome. I love this little interface here. Now, um, I am right-clicking to change these things here. You can um, left-click left and drag around to move the uh, interface there. And we can set this to push, to pull, to push and pull, or disabled, okay? And uh, that can be changed to any different side. And uh, you don't actually see that. Oh, you do actually You see it at the front of the machine. Um, but, 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 but let's change this to push, okay? So there we go. Neat. Very cool. Very cool. Another thing that you can do with these crafters, which you've probably already been thinking about in your head if you've never used them before, is that you can daisy chain them together to create crafting strings. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that by doing this. So I'm going to take a bunch of these. I'm going to have this crafting uh, wood planks, and we'll just have it at the slowest speed. That's fine. And I'm going to go to this configure IO button. You can see that we have another crafter right next to it. So I'm going to pull all of these wooden planks out of here, and I'm going to deposit them into the crafter next to it. But since there's no pattern here, eh, it's not really going to do anything. Let's throw a pattern in. Bam. Okay. Now we have a pattern inside here, and now we have to basically pull from this chest over here. And there we go. All of the wooden planks that are being crafted here are being shoved over to this crafter, and uh, we have a little bit of a string going. And you can um, string this along for as far as you want. You can have uh, 
the end result be hoppers or something down the line here. And you can send these chests maybe with a crafter on top of this one to make something else. Um, let your imagination run wild. There's a lot of things that you can do with these. All right, so we're going to jump downstairs here in just one second. But before we go down there, I just want to issue a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, what you're about to see um, is an alternative crafting method or an alternative to basically the standard AE2 um, molecular assembler chambers or crafting towers, stuff like that. You can do what I'm about to show you in uh, in other ways. Maybe they're easier ways. Um, this is just an alternative way. Um, it's just something neat, a little machine that I made um, that's more for, uh, I would say, not necessarily end game setups or bases, but um, setups um, where you have a lot of resources at your disposal and maybe um, some resources to even waste. So before the comments start flooding in, um, telling me that I'm an idiot and you can do this so many other ways, why would you even use these like this? Um, this is just to kind of spark your imagination because I know I've watched other people's videos before and seen some of their little setups and builds and been like, wow, I can I can improve on that design or I really like that and you make it better and it's kind of inspirational. So that's really the point of what's down here. The point is not to uh, um, make you do something in 10 more steps and you have to do it. It's to be kind of inspirational. So if you have any um, setups or builds using any mod at all, um, give us a, a screenshot. Send it to us at ingram at theminecrafters.com if you're not sure how to spell that. Um, the email address is in our um, what, my YouTube channel description. Uh, send us a screenshot, a couple screenshots maybe, um, with a little bit of annotation so that we know what's going on and what your machine does, and maybe we'll f feature it in a little video just like this one. All right, for this next part, I'm going to spend more time explaining what's actually going on than how I built these little pods. It's fairly easy to see how I built them, um, and if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. What I have here are three different pods. Um, this one is not actually functional. I'm just kind of using these two as a demonstration. Um, but each of these pods has four different crafters, and each of the crafters is responsible for maintaining stock on a certain item. And you can see the items um, are on these little item frames as you move around them. That's just for your convenience. Now inside of this crafting or ME system here, I have a whole bunch of different items, and you can see that they're all maintaining a stack of 64. And this is what these pods are doing. If I pull out a stack of oak wood planks, the system immediately replenishes itself. Itself. If I pull out a stack of sticks, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's using the oak wood planks from one of the crafters and uh, turning them into sticks. And both of them are trying to maintain a stock of 64 at all times. And once it gets back up to 64, it's just going to stop. Now, how in the world is this working? Well, let's take a look at this here. Inside each of these, I have a full stack of a completed item. And most importantly, I have an Emmy storage bus attached onto here to recognize this completed stack. So, very important here. I have one 64K cell, okay, that's actually got something on it. I'm just pulling all these out. Okay, and what's on this 64K cell is these items right here. None of these items are on the 64K cell. So if I pull this out, those disappear, but all my items still stay in there. And that is because each storage bus attached to these crafters is only recognizing this spot here. The storage buses will not recognize the inventory of the uh, right crafting grid. They're just going to recognize this. And that's how they're showing up inside the system. So these are not actually part of my storage, um, which is another benefit of this, of this system. Um, but as soon as I take some out, it's going to recognize that they're gone, and this one over here is going to craft them back up to 64. And you can see that happening right inside of here. So these are pretty cool. All right, this item conduit pod over here is uh, pretty unnecessarily complex, but it's just to show you that you can use item conduits to uh, get items inside of these crafters. What I have here is an interface down at the bottom, and I've chosen to export a whole bunch of different things. Now, it's important to note, and I didn't mention this earlier, um, that even though, let's say, this is exporting redstone, um, it's not going to end up inside the hopper recipe because it's not a part of this recipe. Okay, so the crafter is only going to accept the things or the items that are part of the crafting recipe. So there will be no redstone getting mixed up in here. So that's a cool feature of these things here. Um, so the item conduit is taking from the uh, interface, which is set to jam all these things out as long as there's a valid spot in here. And uh, if I take out, let's say, my stack of furnaces, it's just going to go ahead and try to replace cobblestone as fast as an ender IO conduit can and get me back up to 64. And once it's there, it's going to refill the grid and get me ready for the next time that I yank out 64 furnaces. If I only yank out one, or let's say if I only take out half a stack, it's, it's still going to replenish it, okay? So it's just kind of uh, supplementing your, your auto crafting system. 
um, to keep up with some some basic items. All right, so this one here is made using uh, basically AE2 items. We have export buses right here and right here, and then we have the same storage buses and then another two export buses here and here. Now this is going to use um, more channels on your AE2 system or your ME system. However, this is probably the fastest way to jam items in here because you can upgrade the export buses with uh, with different cards. This one's not actually functional, um, but this is probably the fastest method to uh, to get things to craft inside one of these little pods. All right, now finally, this little pod with the interface only um, is probably the cheapest way to go if you're going to make one of these. Um, um, but it's not actually the fastest. This one is the faster of the three here. What I have is an interface in the center here, and I have the interface trying to jam out all these different items. So um, wood is trying to go into this one here, and this is going to make me all those wood planks. You can see that happening there. Bam, back up to 64, and it's always keeping me in stock. If I go ahead and take these sticks out, um, you can see that I have this one set up to buffering single items. You can change this depending on how many... Um, or how many resources that you have available to you. Um, if you can afford to do this, then it's gonna craft much, much, much faster, okay? If I go ahead and do the same thing here, if I take out 64 chests, it's gonna sh slowly shoot in eight until it gets back up to 64. If I wanted to do it faster, I would bump it up to um, stacks or buffering stacks, okay? So I can like help this along here a little bit to get back up to 64, okay? This wastes a little bit more resources, but if you got it, why not? Same thing here. Um, Pistons, pistons, pistons. Watch when I take it out of here, and then I'll move over there. Okay, so I'm going to drag all these pistons out, and you can see that they're firing right back into the system. Okay, and it's using up all these resources. And then when it uses up all these, because it's not going to make, I think, a full stack, you can, you can see it's going to start jamming full stacks back into back into uh, this right crafting grid, and then it's going to be ready to make a whole nother 64 instantly on command. Okay, so this is, this is a pretty neat system that just supplements your... Uh, or helps you to maintain stock levels of basic items. All right, so in this last little room, basically what we have is this setup here just stacked on top of itself four different times. Obviously, it gets a little bit more complex with channels here. So we have a controller down here. Um, it's capable of putting out 32 channels per side. We have all um, 32 being used up, as you can see there. 16 are going here, 16 are going here. Then those are being split off to go here and here. Eight and eight. And you can see that we have our storage buses here, and we're using export buses on either side. Um, so this is a neat little crafting tower um, that's very neat, very put together, um, and maybe something that you can use inside of your base. Just an idea. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this little tutorial video. I hope you guys liked what you saw. Um, again, if you have any little contraptions or, or setups that you have made, doesn't have to be a crafter. In fact, we'd like to it, if it was something else. Um, that you would like to show us and that you think maybe is video worthy. We'd love to uh, showcase it, give you credit for it, obviously, um, post it on our channel. If you uh, like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you tap that subscribe button because we've got a lot of awesome stuff on our channel and you should probably check it out if you haven't already. So until next time, guys, make sure you stay poised. <laughs>